main car time from Miami, the final Friday in April, where we know so much more about the Combate Global planet than we did prior. And we're going to have more questions answered this evening, certainly in the lightweight division, with two big clashes here, including the fight we're about to see, and certainly in the main event with Choco Castillo and Claudio Quintana. There is La Jaula, and it awaits you and your eyes and your ears. You never know what you're going to see. Dreams will be made. Dreams will be deferred all over the planet. Glad you could join us on a Friday night for some slipping into a Saturday morning. My name is Max Bretos alongside Rodolfo Roman. We're a little bit giddy because we don't know what to expect in this main event, but we'll find out if, in fact, Claudio Quintana is the goods. And it's an opportunity for newcomers here to show and display what they have to the world. Richie Palomino making his debut for the first time. Claudio Quintana also making his debut inside La Jala to the world stage. Richie Palomino, a strong background in boxing, going as a game fighter in Hugo Hooligan Flores. Now time for the head-to-head. -head. Palomino, five years the senior. Two-inch height advantage for Flores. Three-inch reach advantage for Palomino. And uh, we are going to be at a catch weight of 160. We're getting ready for all the action, which means we're off and running and going inside the jaula to Lupe Contreras. Las reglas oficiales de la jaula, tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo en la división peso ligero de SPAO, en la lightweight division, los jueces son the judges are Vicente Rodríguez, Héctor Gómez y James Lázaro. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red. Su peso oficial, 159 libras y un cuarto, his official weight, 159 and one quarter pounds. En su octavo combate a nivel profesional, con récord de cinco victorias y dos derrotas. He enters la jaula for the eighth time as a professional, with five victories against two losses. De Santa Ana, California, Richie Palo. Mino. En la esquina roja, vestido de verde en the red corner, wearing green, detuvo la báscula a un peso oficial de 155 libras y tres cuartos. He tipped the scales at an official 155 and three quarter pounds. En 13 combates profesionales, mantiene un récord de nueve victorias y cuatro derrotas. En 13 bouts as a pro, he maintains a record of nine victories against four losses. Fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, y puro Tepic, Nayarit, Mexico, Hugo Hooligan Flores, el referee, Alana Vélez. Alana Vélez the third inside La Jaula. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead, come out and fight. Judge, judge, judge. Hugo Flores originally from Tepic, Nayarit, not Are too far. Very close to the coastline, not too far from Guadalajara. He is in the green and white. And again, Richie Palomino from Santa Ana, which is 80% Latino. It is uh, labeled as the face of the new California. And this company is the face of the new mixed martial arts audience. We're happy you could join us. We're live in Miami. This is the main card. These are lightweights. It's going to be a 160 catch weight. Richie just feeding out Flores right from the start. Flores also just targeting where he's going to strike. He's evolved over time. You see Palomino handing an over right hand. Flores not even phased by it. Palomino. Like, yeah, if Palomino wants to hit that, that leg, he needs to come in a little closer when he kicks. It's like he's not closing the distance coming in. Landon, that kick to the lead leg. Yeah, there's a big Flores. gap here between yeah. these two, and uh, Flores a little sharper closing it as he comes over the top with that right hand. Palomino was one and two. He's won his last four fights, and he's done it in pretty impressive fashion. Two of his last three wins via submission, one via the guillotine, one via Kimura. Look at, look at Flores' eyes, and he's just determined. 
He's just picking a part. He's been very patient, very technical. Sees how he, he has matured, matured as a fighter. He said he's been working on some new skills, some new techniques. Maybe we'll see some of that here this evening. Competed in that USA versus Mexico tournament where his teammate Enrique Baby Bull Gonzalez ended up winning that. We're texting Juliana Peña about Hugo Flores. He goes, hope he lies, lights a fire under his backside. Shouldn't use that word. <laughs> and gets to work. And it looks like he is dialed in. Big kick upstairs on Palomino. And he trained his uh, great teammates, Valley Flo, Ignacio Bajamondes, of course, Juliana Peña. The Very list well represented on. tonight on our card. Well, I mean, a very defensive early on. Now he engages. He gets a knee opportunity. A great guard, though, from Palomino for blocking that overhand right. Trying to protect that right arm, too, as he slips Ooh. it out, and he combines, and for the first time, gets some leather on Flores. Palomino did, didn't lie. He says he has that Mexican boxing, that Mexican style of fighting. He sure is bringing it here tonight. Great fame from Flores. Short left there by Flores. Last we saw him November of 2021. He was in that USA versus Mexico tournament. Lost to Patrick Lehan. Uh, Patrick Lehan was representing Mexico that day. That was a unanimous decision. Just one round. That does classify as a loss for Flores. His last time prior to that in a regulation three-round fight, he beat Alex Torres via split decision in July. Palomino's face is already swelled up. Flores hasn't even broken a sweat. By Palomino. Slow and steady. Now he's starting to find Ooh. his range. Palomino did land that jab. Trying to faint a little bit. Won't be surprised, Max, if Flores changes the levels and maybe test the waters on the ground. Palomino once again throwing in that overhand right. Great boxing. Big oh, kick, that top was. of the leg, it was loud. Palomino's gonna feel that one tomorrow night. What is a very tough upbringing. Gets himself on the straight and narrow in Tepic Nayarit. Flores attempted to go for that clinch work. Palomino wasn't having any of it. This is over the top, Palomino. Great one minute move. to go in this first great round. from Flores, Max. Better from Palomino, catching that lead leg. Palomino's just waiting for Flores to come in and land that overhand right. He is the shorter of the two fighters. Training with the uh, team Oyama. He feels very confident in his team that he's prepared with a great camp against Flores, but Flores Coming in, working the body, picking and choosing. Trying to grab that leg. Yeah, he tried to fake that. Blood on the Take bridge that. of the nose of Flores, and his eyes are now a lot wider. Something got his attention, not the dialed in look that we saw earlier in the first round, of which we're down to 10 seconds. Palomino's jab is coming just real heavy, man. Straight uppercut there from Flores. Good stuff for both men. It was a feel-out round for both these men. And not bad for Palomino. He got no. some damage done. So and he's got, a, he's got Flores thinking a little differently about what lies ahead. Palomino's a tough guy. Good stuff on that debut so far for that first round of Palomino. Flores is uh, right. He seems a little bit swelled up. And he does have that cut right between the eyebrows. Just a little lower. Eyebrow section. Palomino got a late start in MMA. Started when he was 23. That was 10 years ago. He said he was out of shape, looking for something to help drop the weight. So jujitsu was the answer. And here we go with the recap of what happened in that first round. Flores landing in the over right hand. Some work in the clinch. Elbow go. Richie Palomino going for some elbow work, landing in that low kick. But Flores countered with his own. Now we get ready for round two, our first fight from our main fight. card. Second round. 
pace should be pushed here between these two. Flowers now you can see that one two combination coming in fierce. Lots of feints trying to throw off Palomino. And what do you want to see from Flores? That gap which he had control of, it's not completely in his control now, and Palomino's connecting. He's, he's been too patient. Let's, let's, let's be a little bit more aggressive. Pa Palomino leaves a lot of holes available for him that Flores had capitalized with. Palomino's doing his best. He's, he's allowing Flores to come in, and that's where he lands that jab, where he goes in for that low lead kick. See, see Flores' left leg is already bruised up. So Palomino's doing what he has to do. Movement laterally here from the hooligan. And they'll take a stop. It was a glancing shot, but a shot nonetheless. It could take his five minutes. You'll see, maybe we have a chance here. You'll see that left leg of Flores is already bruised up. Good. All right, ready? Time in. Palomino doesn't even take a minute. Hooligan now center of the howler. Can he find the range? Yeah, Tightly contested fight. Hasn't gone his way just yet. So we await the result of that first round, Max. Be interesting to see what we got. Flores says what motivates him is to think about all the training and to build a better life for his family. The objective is to do something big. Starts here. You need to build. Palomino's left leg, too, is also bruised up. Look at that cap. Oh, yeah. Looks like someone. <laughs> it's like a kiss. It's like a lip mark, yeah. <laughs> Flores taking that first round. Right down the gut there for Palomino and Flores with a split decision edge from round one, so it was tight. The build on Palomino, but he has to build on it here in round two. I think he probably thought he had a chance to win that round. More of a of the body. Good output by Palomino. One, two, three strikes. And Palomino is just coming in with full force of those shots. Yeah, it's throwing Flores off. It's not the, the fight he expected. But see, when Flores comes in, he comes with a full flurry of combinations. Palomino would just do the one, two, and back off. One, two, back off. But they come in heavy, especially that right hand. Flores with the footwork, in and out. Can't get the, the quality power punches go. through. A little combination. Flores seems to be getting his groove. Great footwork, though. Great head movement. See how he switches the feet. Palomino was, was asked about this type of fighter he is. He goes full frontal fighter, and it kind of lives up to his words. He's in that pocket, he's taking, and he's throwing. Short left. That one stung Palomino. Ooh, Over the top, Flores. The better from the hooligan. Glancing overhead seen. rights and lefts. Yeah, I'm surprised you haven't seen any groundwork from Flores, Max. That's where you think he needs to go. I mean, that's where he can separate it. You know what you're going to get from Palomino. Why not test the waters? It's a good round for Flores. Not a great one. No doubt, he's the most active one here. Great combination. Now Palomino attempting. Trying to get in there. Takedown. It was short-lived. Flores wasn't having it. He, he, he wants he wants that knockoff victory. That, that's what he's aiming for. Flores changing angles there and levels. Little buckle of the leg. He actually oh, slipped. And oh, Palomino took advantage of it. Oh, Flores, Flores takes another overhead right. He's wobbly back. It all started with a slip, and Palomino exploded. Forearm on Flores. Flores needs to move. Keep your hands up and move out. Palomino, precise punching. Palomino knows where he's at right now. He's landing in the elbow. Flores is still hurt. Survival mode, but a long time to go. Palomino's been clinical here. Finding the sweet spot. Now Flores has got his uh, bearings again. Yeah, Flores here needs to compose himself, pick himself up. That, that a lot of blood. Him. A yeah, lot that. of blood around the... Uh, the the eye, the left eye of Flores, but he starts to fire away. Great defense from Palomino, keeping his hands up. Those shots are not coming at all. Now the question is, how much 
Does that flurry benefit Palomino? Does it lure over the judges? Florida's ending with a plum. And they're gonna have to tend to that cut. It is deep, it is juicy. All right. Great stuff from these dudes. Palomino feeling very confident in this round. It just, it, it's an interesting round to score because Flores had the tempo right. by and large. We had that 30, 40 second stretch where he just but then at the did end, the damage. Flurry, yeah, that flurry there. Both guys, you can see they've been in a fight. Looking much different than the, the way they did when they started. And they're rock floors, taking him right to the, to the howler. By the way, that, that, that's gonna be a problem because we, it's yeah. above the eye. Let's see if we can, if they zoom into that. The floor is this corner. I like to see the, the cut. I can't really tell from the, the angle that was if it's up. There we go. Ooh. It's a big Ooh. one. It is. A, got some oh, separation. Palomino could just pick that apart. Yeah, the, the cut. The cut man's doing his best right, to. Right. Out, 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 out. But that out. Is, there. You already see some out. sweat and blood drip down. Out. A lot of out. sweat. Palomino looks over out. Out, out, to out, see out. his handiwork, and what does he do? He sees that, and you said he has to go for you that. Target. You keep targeting that. That was. Of course, you don't you don't want to end the fight with a doctor stop it because of the cut, but they'll let him fight. All right. But heck, if I could win it that way, I would target last it. Last round, guys. Last round. Last round. Oh, he'll get some yeah, stitches or he'll get stitches, the glue yep. afterwards, but Whew. he's got to make sure it doesn't get any worse because it could be stopped here. Right, ready? Palomino knows it. Flores knows look, it. Look for Palomino. He's just going right from the start. He's gonna go for that jab. Jab. Can he get close enough? And Flores is in a very odd predicament because he's got to protect that, but he still has to be aggressive. We'll get the scores here from round two. That could be very telling. Yeah, Palomino's closing that distance between each other. You hear the corner of Flores just move, 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 move. Because they don't want to go in that pocket. Because Palomino's going to keep targeting that cut. See how he's using that jab and working the body. Palomino got the, the round. There it is. Oh, there was an eye, eye poke. But look at that, he's got a mouse on corner. the left temple yes. too. It's a mess up there. Eye poke, uh, just oh. going through the grinder. Look at the face. Oh, Jesus. And, oh, oh. That's a rough one to look at. That's looking like carne asada. That is. <laughs> <laughs> just in time for secret miles, huh? <laughs> oh, dude, no, it's not a jokey matter, but these guys are tough, and he knows <laughs> what he's dealing with. He's got the mouse, he's got the cut, oh. now he's got a finger in his eye. It's tough. I mean, that's. That's your binoculars, man. That's what you can see through. Yeah, that's the corner. That's it is. That's what he's gonna do. There jab, he goes. Jab, jab. That's but he what got caught. Do. Flores is using that. He knows he's gonna have an aggressive fighter. The scorecard saw Palomina level up on two of the fight judges. So just winning this round could be enough. Yeah, but Flores needs doing what he needs to do is that cutting those corners, hitting from the side. See every time he throws, the step to the left, shoot. Uh, now Flores is uh, feeling much better. He's just got to make sure that there's not much more damage to that eye. Palomino hasn't done much. Palomino's face is getting beaten up too. Yeah, Richie needs to keep doing that jab, jab, jab. And Flores is going for the bridge of the nose where he's done some damage. Now Flores is doing a great job too, uh, cutting those corners, striking from the sides. This is it, folks. These are warriors. Going for it, knowing what is at stake, a win to really propel them forward, hopefully get a fight in the next few weeks, months. There, that slip, that was, we could have circled back because Flores buckled, his feet slipped, and then Palomina attacked. It's not the first time we saw Palomina buckle after a kick from Flores. Three minutes here in this third and final round, and so far so good for the hooligan. Uppercut, misses. So hooligan just moving around, great stuff. Just great head movement, great footwork. He needs to keep doing that, picking apart. Palomino, on the other hand, jab, jab, jab. It's been working for him. Corner keeps staying it. Jab, jab, jab. Palomino just not with the output anymore. The, the thing where Flores, Flores, yeah, the thing with Flores to be careful is if he comes in with a flurry, he has to be cautious because he has that cut. 
The bleeding hasn't been an issue. I mean, it thankfully hasn't been hit there again, but he's it's that the sweat's movement. rolling. It's, it's that movement. You know, Flores is playing a good tactical game. Beautiful yeah, this kick is a, to the leg. That's that Muay Thai. This is an excellent round for Flores. The blood is trickling out, but not as bad as it could be. Beautiful. Hasn't taken a direct shot to that eye. Man. Great stuff. Balamina just punched the air. Flores is just great head movement. And he big buckled the inside, inside kick. track. Oh. And that will buckle you up big time. Because you are you don't have all that weight on that leg. Flores is in a real nice rhythm now. Maybe the best he has had in this fight. And it might separate him from a very game opponent in Richie Palomino. Two bloody warriors inside La Jaula. Toro toe, mucho mas acción. Excellent stuff. Great stuff for these guerreros. Palomino probably thinking about what he could have done to finish this fight in that second round. He was really close to doing it. Over the top combination. Straight down with that jab again. One minute to go. Final round. Flores looking to put the final touches on a tightly contested fight here on our main card. Palomino, not the same as he was in that previous round, not attacking the leak leg kick. Now he just for a kick. Not jabbing as much either. Oh, he got clocked. Now Flores wants that knockout. Here's his chance. Here's that Palomino. Shot. Palomino, stop punching. Oh. Romino protecting that four fight winning streak. They know what's at stake, Max. They know that they got about 30 oh. seconds. They're going to push the pace here. Look at Flores. Palomino can take a punch and take a kick. Oh, Palomino calling him in. Let's go. Flores meeting him there, middle of the howler. Oh. Amazing to get that kind of accuracy this late in a fight from Hugo Flores. The heart of a warrior, Max, that's what it's all about. Both of them, fantastic. Flores had his back against the wall. He got off of it, and he changed the tide of this fight in round three. Much more action. We'll be back. Well, we're looking at the damage that has been done, and both these fighters will probably have to spend some time with the paramedics, certainly more so for Flores, but Palomino is not out of the woods either. Has a tremendous fight. So many ebbs and flows to this one, too. Both guys had their, the advantage at least one time, a couple times for each. Both had to sort of absorb the pressure in spots, too. It varied. It varied, as you can see. Just great combinations from Flores, great head movement. At times, you would see Palomino throw, and he just hit air because of that great defense of Flores as we take a look at the stats. Palomino is hoping his arm could be raised there. It, he certainly is capable, and the stats show that he was the more aggressive fighter. Not by a lot, but he's changing it very effective. When you get into the 90%, you know you're doing something right. The takedowns were not a factor. The key is, he threw a lot, but did it connect? Did it damage? That's what the judges find. Said. Let's find out the decision. Lupe Contreras. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, el juez Lázaro anotó 29 a 28 a favor de Palomino after three rounds of much more action. Judge Lázaro scores at 29 28 in favor of Palomino. El juez Gómez. 29 a 28 a favor de Flores. Judge Gomez scores it 29 28 in favor of Flores. Y el juez Rodriguez anotó 29 a 28. Judge Rodriguez scores it 29 28 in favor of the winner. By way of split decision a favor del vencedor por decisión dividida. El hooligan Hugo Flores. One judge in particular gave that third round to Palomino. He had to sit there and wait to see if he could get influence on that third scorecard. He did not. Split decision victory for the hooligan. And they really managed that eye injury pretty well. They got him to hit the tape. We'll be back. My name is Ivan Choco Castillo. I have 31 years. Y vengo de Ensenada, Baja California, México. 
Mi última pelea en combate fue contra Tommy Aaron. Nos avisaron tres días antes. Ya sabíamos que iba a ser una pelea difícil. Es un tipo duro, es un tipo que no deja de moverse todo el tiempo. Entrenamos para eso, o sea, a la movilidad. Tratamos de, de contraatacar sus golpes, sus patadas y salió bien, todo salió bien. Lo que me motiva para una pelea, cuando siento que voy perdiendo, siento que, que no están saliendo las cosas como yo quiero, pienso en mi papá, pienso en mis dos hijas, pienso en mi madre, ahí es donde yo creo que sale la fuerza y, y me recupero. Esta noche peleo contra Claudio de Spider Quintana. Mi entrenamiento cambió desde el momento que sabía con quién iba a pelear. Fueron cuatro meses intensos de, de entrenamiento, cuatro meses en los que puedo decir que no vi la luz del sol. Fueron muy intensos, busqué nuevas alternativas, salí de mi zona de confort. Creo que eso me hizo más fuerte de lo que era. Sé lo que tengo que saber estando de pie, en la lucha, estando en el jiu-jitsu. Tengo armas para cualquiera de esos ámbitos. Claudio Quintana, espero que te hayas preparado muy bien, porque yo lo hice. Fueron cuatro meses intensos y si te pusiste aquí enfrente, pues va a volar tu cabeza. In Miami, Biscayne Bay, the uh, Miami Heat, they'll be back in action here pretty soon. It's a great sports town. NFL draft, looking with the Dolphins pick, but the Dolphins, I, what can I say? Florida We're not Panthers, talking about Miami. The Panthers? The Florida Hockey. Panthers. F Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Kicking them butt. Inter Miami of MLS going to get a new stadium? A lot happening, potentially. potentially. We'll hold, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hit the brakes on that one. There's Rodolfo Roman. My name is Max Bretos. We are getting ready for our main event and our co-main event. We're also getting ready for a fight on May 29th. We call these a tent pole. And it is a black Spartan, David Martinez, and Franz Lambo, who won the Copa Combate. They will be fighting for the strap. Oh, it's the first defense here for David Martin against Fram Lambo. He looks so great in that Copa Combate. Such an exciting fighter. I invite you to go right now, Paramount Plus, when we're done with this fight. You can watch Copa Combate on demand, and you can check what that man is all about going up against Martinez. We were featured in uh, LA Times not too long ago. That's right. Uh, yeah. The LA Times in Espanol. In Espanol. So it's a big blockbuster match that's going to happen. It's a long holiday weekend here in the United States, but... It's a holiday weekend all over the world because that's uh, this title fight. Correct. And that'll be <laughs> May 29th, and uh, it'll be for a worldwide audience, one of the big fights that we'll be looking forward to. They'll be happening at all the week. We won't have a fight next Friday. We'll have one in two Fridays, and we'll be back on the rails. It's going to be a busy spring and summer. Can't wait for Martinez and Lambo. That is coming up again May 29th, basically a month from this evening. We're getting ready for the co-main event and the main event here tonight. There are the fighters, Tyler Schaefer, talking the talk, ready to uh, get her career off and running. Very proud of her South San Diego background. And Mariel Selimen, finding out of Maracaibo, Venezuela, originally. La Araña, so we have the, the spider in the main event, and we have La Araña, the spider, in this co-main event. Controversy in her last fight. She's looking to make sure there is no doubt about it this time around. Very dangerous thing that she did in that previous fight, but we can talk a little bit a little later when we come back after this break, Max. Very well said, Rodolfo. And we have plenty of time. Co-main, main event, Combate Global Live, Paramount Plus. La Jaula awaits. This is the big leagues. And for Maria Seliman and Tyler Schaefer, you have an opportunity, and you got to grab it with both hands. Silly man representing Venezuela, Tyler Schaefer, San Diego, La Araña, and South Schaefer. What a good fight we have. Let's get ready. We are ready for our co-main event. First of all, let's get a closer look at Silly Men. Cuando conocí a mi esposo, mi esposo estaba entrenando Jiu Jitsu y él quería ser un peleador. Y comencé a entrenar con él y me enamoré del deporte. Mi sumisión favorita es Mata León y el Armbar, son mis dos favoritos. Creo que lo que me diferencia de mis oponentes es que yo vengo sin miedo a nada. Mi estilo de pelea es libre. Yo vengo con todo de ahí. Tengo Jiu Jitsu, tengo la lucha. Tengo el boxeo, tengo mota y pueden esperar a una muchacha que va para adelante, no le tiene miedo a nada y le encanta pelear. 
Tyler, espero que esté lista porque nada más tengo malas intenciones para ti. I fight because one, I enjoy it and I'm very passionate about it. And I feel like this is the only sport in my life that I feel like I'm truly good at now. I've definitely been working on more level changing, more feints. Um, I guess my style is kind of a little bit more swag to it. A ground game for my stand up. I'm feeling ready. I'm ready to go today. <laughs> all the trial and error that I had to go through these past couple months, especially this past week. Last Monday, my, my grandpa passed away and that just added more fuel to my fire. So I'm gonna do whatever it takes to win this Friday. People can underestimate, you know, this pretty face, but once they get hit with these hands, it's a different, it's a different story. And it's, a, it's gonna be a different reaction. And she's very proud of her Filipino roots as she brought the flag into the jaula and she is repping with it here this evening. Two years older than Selimen. One inch shorter and the reach is all even. We are in the women's flyweight division. This is really important for these two ladies to este get things going. Lupe el duelo coestelar de esta noche, tres vueltas, división peso mosca. This is our co-featured bout of the evening, three rounds in the flyweight division. Los jueces, the judges, Ricardo Celis, Vicente Rodriguez y Héctor Gómez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, Llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando en la esquina azul, vestida de azul, introducing the blue corner, wearing blue, su peso oficial, 124 libras y tres cuartos, or official weight, 124 and three quarter pounds. Entra por tercera ocasión a la jaula, con una victoria y una derrota. She enters La Jaula for the third time as a professional with one victory against one defeat. Representando a Maracaibo, Venezuela, Mariel Laraña Selime. Su contraria en la esquina roja, vestida de negro con amarillo, her opponent in the red corner, wearing black with gold, her official weight. 125 and one quarter pounds, su peso oficial, 125 libras y un cuarto. En dos combates profesionales, mantiene un récord de una victoria y una derrota. In two bouts as a pro, she has a record of one victory against one defeat. De San Diego, California, Tyler Southside Schaefer. El referee, Marcos Pérez. Marcos Pérez, the third inside the jaula. South side Schaefer. Okay, so you went through the rules. What I can fight. Those two gloves you want to do it now. Co-main events. Fantastic opportunity, but only one will be able to Ready? grab the ring. Ready? Fight! It is Selimen in blue. Talk to Sally Man, she's now studying nursing. She has her, ooh, Tyler reaching out with that right, right from the start. And Tyler looks completely different than the, the interview she did. She's got the braids up, locked in look on her face. No more <laughs> Mr. Nice Girl. Trying to get that underhook, although Sally Man's got a good hold here, looking for the dump and the takedown. Tyler, good positioning there, the hip for bidding. Sally Man taking her to the ground. She's looking for a trip, but great defense from Tyler. Uh, a different fight compared to that first time that we saw her here inside La Jaula back in December. That fight was for the most part stand up. Sally Man though, already testing the waters in an attempt at taking down Tyler to the ground. Schaefer, who lost to Rosalind Shavira, split decision in December as part of the Copa Combate. Uh, one of the preliminary fights there. And she has dealt with a lot of tragedy. She's mentioned the loss of her grandfather, but early on in her life, the passing of her baby sister, Erin, who lost a battle with cancer at the age of seven years old. It's not fair what some people have to deal with, but some are burdened with that. And Tyler is that, it's made her stronger, and she said she's fueled the fire for this fight on her most recent loss. Salomon searching for that rear naked choke. And the triangle locked in. 
Good grip there for both her legs. Making it, she's really wrapped around like a spider on the webs, making it difficult from Tyler here. Schaefer staying active. Referee advising to have some action, or if not, they're going to have to break this apart. It's really tough for Sally Mann. She should be 2-0 in her professional career. But the DQ, one and one, and it's a, it's a, it's a big step back. You have to wait for that next fight. And she wants that rematch. She wants that victory back. Well, we encourage our fighters to call out opponents, and Schaefer sees that opportunity as well. She says she wants a shot at Maritza Sanchez. Stop it, stop it, stop it, been stop very stop. successful. There will be a separation here to the benefit of Schaefer, who dealt with some, some problems there. She's gotten out of it. Back to stand up. She has that strong background in Muay Thai. Cracking right game. hand. But well, we saw with Blanca Marquez when Sally Man made the debut here in Sala Haula. Great combinations and kicks. There'll be a time here where she should really bring up the pace. You'll see a flurry of punches. And she has great cardio, Max. So when she gets that groove, Sally Man will. Find that, that vibe and just push the pace. Schaefer said she watched both Selimen fights under the Combate banner. An idea for her opponent, and she knows she's putting it to work, trying to move into that blind spot with her lateral movement. Good lead leg kick by Schaefer. If you notice here, Tyler really doesn't like to close that distance between the fighters. Selimen who's coming in. Schaefer closed the distance that time, got yeah. a kick into the midsection. The uh, corner certainly liked it. Salomon now training with the camp of Gold Shed Academy and Bushido Muay Thai. Both these, both these fighters have pop in those fists. They definitely got hands. Sally Mann from the headbutt incident said she learned she needs to be in control. Don't let things get in her mind. Try to be a better person. Yeah, that changed her uh, as a person and as a fighter. And, and, and it goes back to the second round. Her opponent threw in a, a shot right after the bell. They really upset Sally Mann. And at that point, you, you don't you don't want to get any points deducted or anything like that right after that bell. So you kind of have to take a deep breath, relax, and wait for the start of the next round. But you, you got to control the emotions. This, yeah. this this is a competitive sport. This is not a brawl. There, there's there's levels to this game. Yeah, that is a that's a, a long talk you have with your fight team and say, look. This is a, a learning lesson, but it cannot happen again. Anything like that, because one rush of blood can pay a heavy, heavy price for. Yes. And not only for her opponent, for herself too. She could have got hurt with that headbutt. Sally Men checking those kicks. It's been a busy first round, which is about to end here in our co-main event. Feeling out process, I am sure. But good amount of activity there. Good stuff from Tyler compared for that first time that we saw her here inside La Jaula. She's been connecting with a lot of straight over right or straight crosses. Sellyman, it's more like the uh, testing of the waters. Sure, she'll pick up the pace in the second round as you see she checked that kick. Tyler, over right hand across, connecting to the chin of Sellyman. That was that, that kicker there when that coffee kicks in. They woke her up. <laughs> Sally Man then now taking her, perhaps searching for some submission work. Tyler, though, good positioning of the hips, breaking in that grip. Let's see what's at stake in the second round. Ready? Ready. We are back here for round two, so an improved effort certainly from Schaefer. Selimen, I don't know she's in a fight, but still taking the center of the howler with some frequency as she does again here to open up round two. Tyler looks more of the, the stronger of the two, I would say, physically, yeah, if the, you were to the pair The leg up. kicks have been, yeah. the kicks, period, have been very Great impactful. Team. 
and there's much more. Just an active set of feet, moving, kicking. Well, she said she was working at the feint. She's been using it all this time around. And it's working for her as we look at those open scoring of that first round. Max. This is the official scoring. Sally Man with the takedown. She gets the... Schaefer gets the edge, pardon me. Yeah. Well, a split call from the referees. It felt like a close round. It certainly is reinforced by the scores. Schaefer, though, they're doing most of the damage with those shots. Right into the corner for Schaefer. Maria Silimen, living in Venezuela. Her mother, when uh, President Maduro took over, mom told her to go to America. She did. Her husband wanted to get into MMA. She trained with him and fell in love with the sport. And a new beginning here. Her husband, who, comp who competed here in mixed martial arts. Stop, 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 Another separation here, just not enough activity. And this will probably benefit Schaefer. She's been so good with the kicks. See if she can unfurl a few now. Yeah, Schaefer needs to keep this fight in the center of La Hala, where she's been having much success. That's for Seliman. I think she's going to go to that strategy of taking this fight to the ground. Also, if Seliman needs to push, put, put the, the foot on the accelerator here. In the previous fights, you would see their combination speed was, was just ridiculous. It was just fast pace. We haven't seen much of that in this fight. Well, Schaefer's getting into a groove, and she's fainting these left hands yeah. and then connecting with the lead leg of Seliman. There it is again, but this time with the overhand looping right. Well, she was stating facts in an interview, which she says, I was working on the feints, I've been working on new tricks. We're seeing it here tonight. She's staying out of target. Great head movement. Great. Uppercut. Ooh, the game plan for Schaefer is working. Schaefer has just been hating that cross. Oh, yeah, another nice feint stop. and a hit into the ribs. That hurts oh, Silly Man. Right. Silly Man is stopped, and now she can't find her range. Jab. Tyler just improved so much. It's really an overnight improvement from the first time that we saw her in the Aula. All sorts of striking. Yes. Power punch, strong kicks. And the head movement, shoulder movement, when she throws in those hands. The defensive fighting has been as impressive as the offense. Again, the lead leg. So Sally Man's lead leg has got to be getting uncomfortable. And the corner of Schaefer wants them to wants her to double, triple up on that. At, at this point, Sally Man should test those waters on that ground again. Sally Man is all out of sorts now. This, these kicks are taking a toll. She's puzzled. She's just getting clocked. Look at the eyes. Yeah. She, she, she looks puzzled. She keeps walking into those punches, and she can't defend the leg kicks. But she, she attempted that leg. She tried to get that lead leg kick, but Taylor just a stronger of the two. Beautiful jabs. Back. There it is. The jabs have been the difference because they've set up everything. Great defense from Tyler. Oh, he read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> we, we beat him to the punch a couple times. Another short jab. Sally Man has to go for a plan B. What, she's walking into this. She's going into the game plan of Schaefer. This is not going to succeed for her. It's not going to end well. Sal, look, that lead kick, that lead leg is there, but she keeps switching the stance. She needs to capitalize on this. She has 54 seconds. Not enough time here. Sally Man is a big fan of submissions, says she uh, likes the rear naked. Also, armbar are her favorites. Right here, she needs to level up, change gears, go for the leg, the trip. But great defense on Tyler Hart. She uses a howler to position herself, prohibiting Sally Man to go to the ground. So it's not a good matchup for Sally Man. At least she's trying something different. Not much time to make a change of direction here in round two as those ear slaps don't feel good either. No, they don't. Stay up, stay up, stay up. Sally Man has got to get a new game plan as we are heading to the third round. Sally Man is, is limping. It seemed like he was limping there a bit. I wouldn't be surprised the way she has absorbed kicks to that lead leg. And for Schaefer, she's done all the work. Five more minutes to complete the job. 
corner of Selim and just telling her, throw. Throw that overhand right. Connect it. Can't, can't come straight up. Got to change some yeah, angles, change some levels. You, ha you have to work the angles because every time she goes forward, she gets clocked with that every jab time. or that cross. Corner man there. Adrian, who's also competed here in Combate Global. Well, they are uh, enthusiastic. Ready, ready. Getting ready for round three. Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman here on uh, Paramount Plus. We are live. Combate Global and the corner of Maria Selimen. Very encouraging that there is a way to rescue this fight. And throw. <laughs> throw and get out of the way and find those counter punches. They said it's there. Look at that. She, the, the, the corner is saying use the jab, and as you throw that jab, you got to use that right foot to go to the side and throw in that over right hand. The problem is Schaefer's jab is just that much better. It's strong. It's heavy. And it's connecting every single time. She said she's worked harder than she ever has, and it shows right now. As you look at the open yes. scoring, Max Tyler ahead of the game so far. Seliman connecting with the elbow, though. Schaefer may be out of view for Seliman, who's going to need a massive round three. The jab every time finds its target for every Schaefer time, in yellow. Every time she comes in, Seliman gets met with that jab. It's a battle of jabs right now. They both know it. One is just better than the other in that category, but the lead leg targeted again. South side Schaefer. It's almost like the Austin Powers movie when they get in the little golf cart and they just keep hitting the wall back and forth. <laughs> I wonder if he ever got out of there. <laughs> I don't think so. Man. <laughs> Look at the leg there. Uh, already the blood rushing to the surface of Selimen on the thigh, the quad, the shin. Better from Selimen, now she's closed the gap. The fights keep getting harder here in Combate Global as you keep climbing the ladder. And it's evident we're seeing it here tonight, Max. I mean, if you had a report card for Schaefer, I mean, she gets an A in everything, even defense, although finally taken down. The improvement is there. She, from the feint, from the takedown defense, from the way she used that jab, the strategy, that playbook, she stuck to it. And it worked just fine. And she's giving her now back. She has to be careful here. She has to be cautious to see what she's done in the groundwork. Let's see if she's. We didn't see much of it in that previous fight because for the most part it was a stand up. But let's see that defense. Selimen has found something that works, and now that arm got under the chin for a moment. This is where she needs to be careful. She needs to quickly try to get to that feet, use those hips. Some wrist control, that's what the corner said, but that arm gets under the chin. So much time left in this fight. And now a good squeeze Selimen. for Selimen. It's not under the chin yet, but it's getting closer every moment. The chin is still intact for Schaefer. Late in a fight, it's very hard to complete I mean, this. Right, right now you're sweating. You yeah. But this is, this is the only shot that Selimen has. She has two minutes. This is your only opportunity because this has been working for her. It hasn't been the stand-up game. And that triangle's locked in so she could keep her here for the remainder of this fight. This is what she's been looking for. Finally found some daylight and snuck in. And Schaefer's body language isn't great right now. The only thing that Schaefer has to depend on is if... That one's another attempt. Yeah, if Seliman uses that grip, but right now it looks very tight. Positioning those legs. Minute 30, Tyler, minute 30. Your torso area. Minute 30. Hand fight. Very honest Boys, from the Hand corner fight. of Schaefer to let her know how much time is left. Seliman is just Hand waiting for that opportunity Hand where Hand Schaefer Hand leaves Hand herself Hand open Hand and she can sneak in that arm well, and call it a night. It's like a jigsaw piece. Uh, yeah. Is she is locked in for the remainder. And it can't really be picked up by the referee because Selimen is staying very active. Another attempt, another crank. Now she has, she has that chin down. It's like a Rubik's cube. We're figuring out Rubik's cube. Oh, now it's going to oh. Marielle Selimen would not be denied. Oh, she was losing this fight. She got the back. 
She tried in every direction and finally sunk it in. A come from behind. What a comeback from Sally Man. You gotta feel sick for Tyler Schaefer, who fought a beautiful fight, but made one mistake. That's why every single movement matters. And, and look at the corner here, bringing a picture. I, I, I can't see what picture it is. It's a family picture, but she was showing it to Tyler. Oh, it's, it breaks your heart. You pull uh, for yeah. these fighters with so much in the balance of wins and losses. Man. The corner said it was there for Sally Men. It's etched on her face what she was able to accomplish. Two warriors on display there. Maria Seliman coming back in remarkable fashion to get this win. She locked in that rear naked choke attempt, the triangle, and Schaefer was locked in for two and a half minutes. She fought off a long time. Eventually, Seliman was able to lock it in. It's a comeback from behind victory for Seliman as she just listened to her corner, worked the angles, landed the shots, and finally took Tyler to the ground where she was able to lock in that rear naked choke. Vio, the blue corner, sinks in a rear naked choke, forcing her opponent to tap with an official time of four minutes, nine seconds of the third and final round. La ganadora, por su misión, your winner by way of submission, La Araña. Mariel Selime! La Araña, they say she always fights like a spider and always finds a way to sneak in there. And she was able to do it. And that's her first submission victory. Could be 3 0. Lesson learned, but 2 1 sounds a lot better than 1 2, and that's where she was headed. But Tata should not keep her head, head down. She displayed an improvement here. I'm sure we'll see her back in San Laola. We get ready for the main event. Oh, yeah, we know about Choco Castillo, his opponent, Claudio Quintana. We're about to get an introduction. We are here in Miami, our final Friday in April. Every card has been magnificent and memorable. And we've had a, a great card here, but we still have one more fight. And this has all the makings of being something very special. Claudio Quintana, who came to Miami to be in the corner of Hugo Flores. He is a teammate of Enrique Baby Bull Gonzalez. Baby Bull Gonzalez picks up an injury. Claudio Quintana steps up and now has an opportunity to end a winning streak of Ivan Choco Castillo and move to the summit at lightweight. Es es algo que me llena de orgullo, que me hierve la sangre. Es algo muy motivante para mí. Mi entrenamiento cambió desde el momento que sabía con quién iba a pelear. Fueron cuatro meses intensos de entrenamiento. Busqué nuevas alternativas, salí de mi zona de confort. Creo que eso me hizo más fuerte de lo que era. Choco. El obstáculo más difícil que, que he enfrentado ha sido la pérdida de mi papá el año pasado, pero también ha sido algo que me ha dado la fuerza para seguir adelante. Claudio Quintana, espero que te hayas preparado muy bien y si te pusiste aquí enfrente, pues va a volar tu cabeza. Yo comencé a practicar las MMA a los 19 años por un amigo que me presentó, eh, me mostró las artes marciales, me mostró unos videos y cuando los vi eh, dije yo quiero hacer eso. En mi país ser deportista es difícil, por ende eh, toda mi carrera ha sido con un trabajo un poco más, un poco extra. Creo que en general estoy acostumbrado a las dificultades. Los peleadores de Chile se destacan porque, porque tienen sangre guerrera. Me motiva a seguir siempre las ganas de, de triunfar, de seguir aprendiendo y de demostrar lo capaz que soy. Huge opportunity for you in the main event. I'm sure the nerves are there, the butterflies are there, Max, but you gotta put that aside, man. This is your shot against the game opponent, Ivan Castillo. Main event time, Lupe. Este es. El duelo estelar de esta noche, tres vueltas, división, peso ligero. This is the main event. Three rounds in the lightweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are, James Lázaro, 
Ricardo Celis y Vicente Rodríguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, presenting the blue corner, wearing green, vestido de verde, su peso oficial, 155 libras y media, his official weight, 155 and one half pounds. Entra en su trigésimo sexto combate a nivel profesional, con 22 victorias y 13 derrotas. He enters La Jaula for the 36th time as a pro, with 22 victories against 13 losses. De Ensenada, Baca, California, México. Iván Choco Castillo. Su contrario en la esquina roja. His opponent in the red corner, wearing blue, vestido de azul. Detuvo la báscula un peso idéntico de 155 libras y media. He did the scales at an identical 155 and one half pounds. En 12 combates profesionales, mantiene un récord de 8 victorias y 4 derrotas. In 12 bouts as a professional, he has a record of 8 victories against 4 losses. Fighting out of Chicago, Illinois. Y representando a Temuco, Chile, Claudio Spider. Quintana, el referee, Alana Vélez. Alana Vélez, the third inside the howl up for the main event. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead, come out, fight. Judge, judge, judge. We were really excited all week for Choco Castillo, Baby Bull Party Gonzalez. Right. We got the news Party that Baby right. Bull Gonzalez couldn't go. And then this, an opportunity to see a decorated fighter step in and perhaps have this dream sequence to move to the top against Ivan Choco Castillo, who has won four straight. Quintana has won five straight. He is in the blue. Quintana right now is like Eminem in eight mile. This is your shot. This is your, <laughs> your shot. opportunity. Get in there and do what you got to do to display what wow. you have. Tag your it. Explosive kick. And you mentioned about the unorthodox ways and about how much movement, and you're already seeing it here. And as the fight goes, if it goes to the distance, you'll see that he feels more confident. And he does his, his, his awkward things, but they throw you off. And it's really entertaining. You'll see his, these, these maneuvers that he does. That's got to benefit him against Choco Castillo. Wasn't Great. expecting this. He obviously did his homework. This could be a tough challenge for Choco. I mean, the, the fact that he took the fight on a day's notice, he didn't have that much time to study Claudia, but it, it, it's really deceptive, you know? And the way really to counter this, and he, he switches a lot of its stance. You'll see here, great movement from Claudia. Choco just oh, needs to come right. in. He has to cut in, come in to cut the corners. Changing stances is changing Quintana. Anyway. Those for the takedown and succeeds. Great stuff from Claudio. That's a big man you're taking down. I mean, uh, Choco Castillo's here at 155, but he was a welterweight until recently. This is his 35th professional fight. Prior to this competition, Max Claudio has taken on former world champions and has defeated them. That he one blocks. Their nice flex. Snuffed by Choco. There's no doubt Claudio Quintana deserves to be inside La Jaula. He has the resume to prove it. Eight wins for Quintana, three submissions via rear naked choke, two via armbar, two via triangle choke, so a submission specialist. Seven wins. Has not fought though since January of 2020. And that, that was a chance to really improve his level. Again, he left Chile, came to Chicago, to train with Valley Flow, improve his game. He said they helped me out a lot, training with these savages, learning some new stuff. And at the same time, most of all his fights were in South America. This is the first time he fights overseas in the United States. And a big it's shot. It's a big step up in class. It's, it's a big step, uh, a change of levels, and a different type of competition. As we see here, Choco and... Center of that jaula. Now both stop the output there. Big kick by Quintana. And that's oh. the best of the bunch. Catches the lead leg and it buckled Castillo. Yeah, 
Joker needs to keep coming in. Kalu loves to switch the stance. Very north unorthodox. And he's at non-stop motion. Quintana very proud of his Chilean route. And the warrior mentality. We have warrior blood, he said. Sangre Mapuche. Blood of many years of war. And if you know about Chile, there is a lot of conflict through the years. Got to be tough to be from there. And he's from Temuco, which is just south of the capital, Santiago. Overhand right attempt from Choco. Castillo. Castillo compared Claudio similar to Tommy Aaron. We talk about guys fighting a lot in 2021. No one fought any more than oh, Tommy that, Aaron. That's another guy. That guy. Yeah. Just give him a buzz. He's ready. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a gap. Uh, now we're almost at the end of April. Four-month camp here for Choco Castillo to prepare for this. Oh, great exchange there from Claudio. Choco gets out of there. We are worldwide tonight. A, a special hello to those listening in Ukraine on Exports. Oh, right. that hurt right. Choco. He shot. covers up. Oh, he is hurting. Up. He's covering his midsection. Maybe the sternum. Trying to breathe. Castillo's picking up that breath, but he felt that one. Quintana looks like he's prepared for this fight for months. It's been and five days. And I mentioned that flashiness from Claudio. And that's what he's, he will do. He will hit you with some things you did not see coming. We asked Quintana in our pre-fight show, and he says, look, I've been training hard. I did have to drop weight. That was the hardest part, 15 pounds to make it. He did. And it's all paying off for him. An impressive first round. Oh, another one. Another <laughs> so Choco Castillo with some work to do in his corner. He felt that kick, Max. That was the one, right? Maybe took the wind out. Maybe that gets better, but you never you know, know if there's structural th damage. Thankfully for Castillo, that kick happened towards the end of that first round because he's able to catch his breath and recuperate. Talking about pressure, applying pressure. And this is uh, the first time we've seen Choco have to deal with some. Round two, Claudio Quintana in blue. An impressive first five minutes in his Combate Global career. This is, for Ivan Choco Castillo, his sixth fight in Combate from Ensenada. In Baja California, it is a hotbed for MMA and so many great fighters that fight here in Combate. Another attempt at the spinning kick. He wants to land another one to that gut and to just follow with a flurry of punches. But how about Quintana there? He takes a kick to his lead leg and then he switches stances. One and done for Choco. And that's what throws you off. Oh, oh. good right by Quintana. Now with a takedown, he puts Choco on his back. And it, Choco here might be in trouble. That's how he lost that fight against JC. Way back when, his last defeat that he had. Similar situation. Claudio, great control here. He has the mount. And now, now he has the Choco back. Choco reacts, and now he drops the hips. He may land in the rear naked choke, maybe, potentially. You can see from this angle, he's softening him up. Remember, he's a submission extraordinaire. Seven of his eight wins via submission, and this is why he had all those strikes to set this up. Choco Castillo has to show his defense here. He has that lock on Castillo. And once again, at the oh, bottom, oh, bar. beautiful transition. Spectacular transition. Oh. Choco's not done. He moves out. Another stretch oh. and the tap. Oh. Claudio wow. Quintana grabs the ring. Woo. Telling you, Max, this guy was like Joker. He didn't know what he was going to hit you with. Quick, fast, unexpected, unpredictable. Special submission game. Nine wins for this man, six in a row, and one here in Combate. How this man's life has changed here. He was supposed to be in a corner, and now he's going to get his arm raised in the main event.
Isn't that crazy? That's a fairy tale come to life. I liked uh, the uh, Eminem analogy. I think it's perfect. <laughs> but listen, he li uh, maybe he listened to that song right before coming in here. He knew that this was his chance, and he couldn't uh, just put it away. He took advantage of it. Main event, defeating a game opponent in Choco Castillo. And the quickness, he reacted so quickly. He was working for the rear naked, and then he found that arm just laying around. Choco turned, and then boom, made Choco tap. Choco Castillo, not sure what just hit him after taking some severe shots from Quintana. It all set up the submission game perfectly. A rear naked choke turned into an armbar. You see here softening him up, laying some shots on the ground. And then he had the arm bar right here. And then he's going to turn it. Great work from Castillo, but he just wouldn't let go. He was resilient until he pressured up those hips, forcing Choco Castillo to tap. Here's that view from the ref camera. It's a better angle taking you inside La Jaula. What it looks like to be inside. Claudio Quintana's reaction, just amazed at what he has accomplished in just days notice, Max. Incredible. In the words of Eminem, if you had one <laughs> shot or one opportunity yep. to seize everything you ever wanted in one moment, would you capture it? He did. He got it. Tiempo oficial de un minuto, 35 segundos del segundo episodio. This bout concludes with an official time of one minute, 35 seconds of round number two. Your winner, by way of submission, el vencedor por sumisión de Chile, Claudio Spider Quintana. He backed it up, and you feel for Choco Castillo because we know about taking a fight. He took it. It wasn't a good matchup for him. So what do you do? Here's the question. Do I stay on 155? Do I go to 170? And if you're Quintana, what happens I with mean, your teammates, Baby yeah, Bull Gonzalez? That's a, that's a different combo we can have over coffee, Max. That's gonna, that's where it gets really interesting. They both are in the same gym. <laughs> that's very interesting. You see Hugo Flores also part yeah. of the team. He was going to corner Hugo Flores. <laughs> and now Hugo Flores is basically cornering him. Crazy stuff. You just don't know what you're going to see. But this guy is legit talent. And for the fans in Chile looking for their next great athletic son, you got one. We'll be back to put a bow on an incredible night. Maximiliano Steel. Some incredible fights on the horizon for Combate Global. The return of Axel Osuna was, at one point, one of the best flyweights anywhere. And Patrick Dehan will be back as well. Julian Gallardo. We, of course, have the big fight with Martinez Lambo at the end of May, Memorial Day weekend, May 29th. If that didn't give you the chills, I, I, I don't, you're not human. Look, that is, <laughs> they're watching that promo there. This is an opportunity. That was fantastic, and we have so many great fights and fighters to look forward to in the weeks and months ahead. And it's just going to get better. An incredible roster. So many guys under this banner here in 2022 because it's the place to be. And, and it's going to get a lot more interesting, Max. Soon, very, very soon, the rankings will be revealed. And where do you put Claudio Quintana? An incredible night here in Miami. And if you are always going to look forward to 
being a fighter and what can a company promise you? Well, they can promise opportunity. Now, Combate Global has a great example. Said, look what the case of Claudio Quintana. We delivered. We gave him something. He took the opportunity, and now the world is his. You knew it. it but you know, it takes a lot of confidence. You know, when you're ready, you're ready to go. He took that call. He said, I'll be there. Fly me in. I was already going either way. I was going to corner my teammate. Give me that shot of the main event. And rightfully so. Claudio Quintana, you know, I guess he didn't mention it too much, but he lived up to the hype. At least he did. At the way we were hyping him up, it, it lived it. It's, it's right there in, well, look, in full color. His record and everything about it says, okay, uh, he's talented. He beats people. He does have some losses, but that feels a long time ago because he had all these wins. He's learning, but it's still fighting in Chile. This is, this is the it's, big it's, fellas. It's, it's, a dip, it's a different area where you're walking in side La Jaula comparing and nothing against the folks right there in South America but the competition here uh, in Combate Global is just at another level yeah and, and you're fighting well-rounded full-rounded fighters like a Choco Castillo who are just good overall and Claudio Quintana I mean he just put this to the end real quickly unbelievable those transitions and it's just worth mentioning how Dominic Choco Castillo has been and to be second best for the entire fight in that main event. We saw his improvement in those victories that he had when he was on that winning streak overall, but it, it just wasn't enough. Claudio Quintana just really impressed everyone here inside La Jaula tonight. Great stuff. And even, even the other folks like Richie Palomino, Sure, he came out a little short in the victory, but he brought his A game against Hugo Flores in a stand-up war between these two, opening up the powerful Flores with a nasty cut to the eye and, and a split decision loss. So it was a close fight between these two men going at a total toll. Then at the end of the fight, I mean, it seemed like they just got on a train wreck because of the shots to each face. I mean, it was just cut open everywhere. Oh, it's a great night for the team from Chicago. Chai Town's going to be celebrating yep. tonight. Some of that deep dish pizza, man. They're going to be celebrating. <laughs> Giordano's, yeah. Enjoy. Not too much. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not, no, in, no. not in this not game. Not cutting weight. <laughs> Here's Hugo and Flores. And for Hugo Flores. And then he became a spectator to watch his guy, Claudio Quintana, a little bit later. But first, a co-main event that also uh, just really tugged on your emotions and went on an incredible roller coaster ride. It would appear that Tyler Schaefer, who has gone through so much tragedy in her life, had Maria Selimen beaten through two rounds. Come back from behind. I mean, this just reminds me of the NFL playoffs last year. All these come back from behinds every single game leading up to the Super Bowl. But this is what happened in this fight as Tyler seemed to have this fight right in the pocket. And then towards the end of the fight, she got a little too comfortable. Wasn't throwing in a lot of shots. And Sally Mann ended up taking her opponent to the floor and landing a rear naked choke submission for the victory. There it is, an incredible card. And by the way, we showed you what's happening on May 13th. We'll have Patrick Lehan, Gabriel Morales, the return of Axel Osuna, and Max Gonzalez. We are out of time on behalf of our entire production crew, headed by Art Izquierdo, Victor Vague, my good friend Rodolfo Roman. My name is Max Pretos. Have a great weekend, and remember, Placido Domingo!